This is Dario from the Lille Babon, and today we are going to show how to read information from Bab's genome. Previously, we told you that the genome is composed by chromosomes, and that chromosomes are too big to be sequenced entirely. To overcome this problem, we cut the chromosomes into millions of small fragments, and sequence all of them in parallel. Now, imagine that chromosomes are like books, and that every of these fragments that we get from the sequencer are single pages of them. From these pages, now we can read the genetic code, but we do not know the position and order of every fragment in the chromosomes. How do we solve this? Luckily, scientists have already prepared a reference genome. Here, we will have one of these books, in this case chromosome 1, but cats have 18 different chromosomes plus the two sex chromosomes. So we will have indeed 20 different books. Now, what we need to do is to take every individual fragment compare it with the reference genome and figure out in which book or chromosome they belong and in which position or page they are arranged. Because we have millions and millions of these fragments, we will not do this comparison manually. For that, we will use a bioinformatic program. These kind of programs are called mappers, and there are many different ones. In our case, we will use one called Bowtie 2. It's very cool because the mapper allows us to assign the position of almost 99% of the fragments in the cat genome. At the end, we will have a file called SAM5, which will contain the sequence information for every fragment and the position that they occupy in the cat genome. Another cool thing about this SAM file is that we can visualize it. For this, we use a kind of program called Genome Browser. In our particular case, we will use the IGV Genome Browser. Now we are going to have a look directly at the IGB browser, which allows us to display the cat genome continuously. Here we can see all the different chromosomes of the cat genome, and now let's zoom into one of them. In a genome browser, you can upload different features. Here, for example, there is a track that marks the position of different genes in the genome. And now let's zoom even more by navigating to a specific genomic region. What you can see now in this track is the exact genomic sequence of this portion in the cat reference genome that we are using to compare with LILBAB. Now, these blocks that you see here correspond to the small fragment that come from BAB's genome sequencing after being aligned using our mapper. The red and blue color code tell us which half of the double helix was sequenced. An important thing from this is that we now can directly see which nucleotides are different in BAB genome compared to the reference genome. But it's important now to explain that these different nucleotides can come from two different sources. Either it is a true variant or either it is an error of the sequencing process. Sequencing errors are normally rare, but they appear from time to time. Now, how can we differentiate if what we see is a true variant or not? For this, we try to get multiple fragments aligning and covering in the same region. And if we see what that from a pile of fragments, only one fragment shows the variant, then we can say that this is a sequencing error, like for example DC at this position. In contrast, if we see that the change nucleotide is present in almost all the reads, then it is a true variant. In this case in particular, in the CAR reference genome, we will have a C, but in the case of BAB, we will have a T. Now let's jump to a different genomic position. In this position now, you can see a very nice example showing that what you learned in your biology lessons was actually true. Cats have two copies of each chromosome. Here, we can see that half of the fragment from BAB genome have a different nucleotide at this position, in this case, a C. This reflects that only one copy of the chromosomes carry this different nucleotide. We will say then that this variant is heterozygous. In contrast, the previous example that I showed you before, this variant was present in the two copies and then we will call this a homozygous variant. So besides the substitution of nucleotides, there are other types of small variants. So let's jump to another region of the genome. Here you can see that sometimes nucleotides, even more than one, can disappear completely. Similarly, new nucleotides can appear, like an A at this position. These two types of variants are called deletions or insertions, and of course they can appear in one or two copies of the chromosomes. Altogether, substitutions, insertions, and deletions form a big group of variants called single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, 
because they only affect a very little number of nucleotides at a time. However, there are another group of variants called structural variations, and this happens when blocks of hundreds or thousands of nucleotides are altered. These types of variants require a more sophisticated type of analysis to detect them, but don't worry because we will explain this in the future. Now that we have covered all this background information, we are ready to show you some results, so stay tuned for the next video.